Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about common sense decorating rules that will blow your mind. Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Baina. I am a virtual interior designer and style coach. One of the things I feel like I'm known for is really making things extra simple when it comes to understanding design. So today I'm sharing 10 of my most popular common sense decorating guidelines that will hopefully help you improve your style. Your eyeballs should literally go up and down. What? Your room is a three-dimensional space, right? It's got two walls, a ceiling, and a floor. You want to bring tall pieces into the space, and you want to bring in horizontal, wide things into the space, okay? And you want to kind of balance. And anytime you notice there's too many long, horizontal, wide things, like a sofa, like a sideboard, and not enough tall things, you gotta bring the tall things in. Window treatments, floor mirrors leaning up against a wall, one signature cool lounge chair that has a really high back on it, tall plants, hanging plants, art, gallery walls, things like that. You wanna make sure in your room that there is a balance. But in general, your eyeballs need to be going up and down. You wanna hang your art at eye level on center though. That's the key. I constantly see people hanging art that is either too high or too low in a room. The general kind of agreed upon height in interior design is about five foot six, but you wanna place the art on center of that, okay? So that when an average person is standing there, they're gonna see the center of the art at the center of their eyes. You Usually when you're styling, let's say objects on a shelf or on a coffee table, it always looks better to decorate in odd numbers. Again, with the styling though, you wanna go back to the first rule I told you, the eyeballs should go up and down. You wanna think about pairing something tall with something low and wide with something kind of in the middle. Mind-blowingly simple tip number four. You want to have open and closed storage in every room. Dressers, sideboards, entertainment centers with doors where you can just hide things in it. You don't see it and it's a very clean block in the room. And then you also want to have some open storage as well. So that could be built-in bookshelves, could be one lone bookcase, something fabulous like Lucite and Gold. That's probably what I would choose. Maybe decorated sparsely in my case with some cherished objects and beautiful art books. That way you have a balance between having visual interest and showing your personality, but also having closed storage so it's functional, so you can hide things. It reduces visual clutter so that... Well, I don't really like this sofa. I hate the fabric. Not a fan of the rug, but it was given to me and I don't have a budget for a new one. Please don't decorate around something that you hate because you're going to keep making design decisions and spending money basing it on something that clearly isn't working for you. One of the most empowering things in design can be the admission that you don't like something, it's not working, and you're going to get rid of it. <clears throat> get rid of it, sell it, donate it, repaint it, repurpose it, whatever you have to do, but just don't continue building your design on that. Your curtains are one of the most important elements in a room and when done properly, it can be like your absolutely perfect camel coat. You can take an outfit like this, put that camel coat over it and you look like a million dollars, but it's gotta be the right camel coat. The one with high quality fabric and great lines that fit your body. You wanna think about just matching the fabric close to the wall color for an elegant, simple, understated look hanging them as high as you can, using a high quality medium weight fabric and making sure they're lined. It can be expensive, it can be intimidating, it can be hard to figure out, but it is worth the effort and time and you can absolutely do it. And once you master it, you often don't change them and they make such an amazing difference in the, in the world. In, in the world. My next tip is a little controversial, but I swear to God it works. I want you to think about using expensive, high-end designer, rich inspiration, things wildly outside of your budget as inspiration for your decorating projects. Why? Why would I do that? Well, what people often do is they find rooms very similar to their budget. They know where the furniture is from. You may not end up getting what you want because you'll be trying to copy a room. And then if you don't do it as good as you think, you might end up being disappointed. So I actually like to use my creativity to take 
concepts of what I enjoy that they do, the color combinations that they use, the patterns, how they will take one entire space and break it down visually, huge spaces, human scale. If you do that, you will probably grow in your creativity and decorating skills 10 times faster than if you sort of limit yourself to things that you think are accessible because you'll be being more creative. There should be some relationship between the exterior and the interior. I was looking at apartments in Dallas and I found this building that looked super cute. I'm like, oh my God, it's high contrast, modern colors. It looks pristine. It looks really cheerful. And then I looked at the interior of the apartment and it couldn't have been more different. Grayish, beige, sad colors, tone on tone. One person is going to want that exterior and then another completely different person is going to want to live in that interior. It doesn't all have to be matchy matchy perfect, but you just want to have certain things that carry throughout the home exterior to the inside that are going to say this is the person who lives here. So that opposites and in interior design create the needed contrast that makes something actually feel like they go together. You just want to think about, look, if I have a square type sofa, I'm going to put something with some rounded curvy edges on it. If I have something that's very heavy and low to the ground, now I need something that has a little bit of legginess, that has some breathing room. Opposites attract, they usually work beautifully in interior design, and that helps your home feel more balanced to the eye. So those are my common sense decorating tips. I hope they helped. Let me know if you haven't heard of any of them before. I have a ton more. So if this was a helpful video, let me know if you want me to do part two and make sure to like the video. If it was helpful, subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.